ServiceNow Knowledge Store team is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome, everybody. We're back. We're here at ServiceNow Knowledge 14. We're at Moscone South. Mark Toludo is here. He's the CEO and founder of Fruition Partners, uh, a longtime partner of ServiceNow, a big sponsor of this event. Uh, welcome to the queue. Thank you. Thanks we had you on last year, and uh, you know when we sort of got our first Kool-Aid injection of uh, <laughs> ServiceNow, we, we, we bought into it and have been tracking ServiceNow pretty closely since. It's been, it's been an amazing year, hasn't it? Oh, phenomenal. So yeah. I, I, I assume that the uh, ServiceNow ascendancy is just great news for you guys. You know? Yeah, it's great for business, indeed. So, so what's new since we last talked? Oh, boy. Uh, in the last year, I think we've uh, we doubled in size again uh, from overall headcount. Uh, we actually now have a practice in uh, South America. We have a development center. We kind of saw the need for having a nearshore development center, uh, so we built that in Colombia. Uh, and I think you know just a, the new addressable market, uh, enterprise service management as, as ServiceNow. You know uh, that's a big thing we're going after. What's your headcount now? Uh, we are at uh, over 220. Wow, nice. Yeah. And where in South America? Uh, actually, in uh, Colombia, outside of uh, Barranquilla. Columbia. I've never been to Columbia, but I hear it's the best place to go. In, I have uh, yet to go there, yeah. <laughs> but I hear great things. Yeah, well, you're nation building. You'll be there soon, <laughs> soon I'm sure. So, uh, okay, so um, how's it going down the floor? I, I see you guys got a big presence. Yeah. I've uh, been down there a few times. It's, yeah, great uh, activity. Uh, I got a lot of people coming to the booth. We've had a book signing. We actually had a party at Alcatraz last night. Oh, no kidding. Phenomenal. Yeah. Everybody got off? <laughs> By most of them. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody got stuck behind. <laughs> right. Did they do a sweep at the yeah, end of the If they night? do, they there's do. no cell phone service, so we don't know. They're still there. <laughs> Good. All right, so we're here to talk about uh, App Factory a little bit. What is App Factory? So App Factory is a, it's a fruition service offering. We're actually taking third-party built applications and we're productizing them uh, for the ServiceNow ecosystem. So basically, uh, software that potentially has been built we are essentially not only building it, we're marketing it, we're supporting it, and we're distributing it uh, to the customer base. Okay, and um, and you've got a specific uh, example you wanted to share with us in healthcare, right? What's that all about? We do, so you know, we've been working with a um, kind of a healthcare consulting company that was trying to address the, there's an issue with um, healthcare in the US. Uh, it's a, a compliance issue, ICD-9, ICD-10. So you have payers and providers, hospitals that are trying to basically meet new insurance codes. And uh, what was happening is a lot of independent systems were being built on you know, access or notes, and we work with a consulting company. Uh, they were basically the subject matter experts, and they worked with us to design the application uh, so it's completely put on top of ServiceNow. So essentially all major healthcare providers, uh, hospital networks, pharmacies, uh, can actually use this solution to make sure that they're in compliance with the new government regulation and their trading partners are as well, using ServiceNow to manage the process. So was that done opportunistically because you were in a client and they had an app that was built at some time and you thought this would be a better way to do it? Or is there some other way you're identifying these apps that you want to build? And the second part of the question is then, is it just a service you provide for that customer? Or is it something you want to productize? Or is it something that you could go out and share with the broader community? Yes. Yes, yes, <laughs> so, yes. Well, there's two questions there. Where do the ideas yeah. come from? Right. And you know, traditionally our ideas had come from you know, customers that we built for that customer. And so when we took on App Factory, we said, we know there are other, some software vendors that are looking to upgrade to a cloud-based application, and there are even consulting companies that have subject matter expertise. They have great ideas for applications, but they, they're not an application development company. So essentially, those ideas can come from multiple sources, uh, and really the idea is that we're packaging and enabling that. So we saw it at some of our customers. We had a familiarity with this, uh, with this consulting company that we work with. They had already built an application, but it wasn't cloud enabled. It was something that they were trying to manage and they were trying to enhance. And they just decided it's better to put this application into the ServiceNow ecosystem. And so a lot of our customers that are already either healthcare providers, even some uh, universities and hospital systems are already interested uh, to actually get it installed. And was it the initial build a one-off that that consulting company did or were they actually, did they actually have a product that just didn't, weren't doing it the right so way? They, so they had the methodology and they realized the methodology also needed automation. So they took it upon themselves uh, to build it. To but, build it But software. it was on, you know, kind of client server technology. Okay. It was dated. Uh, and I think the nature of the solution we're trying to solve here is that you have um, 20 to 50 different companies trying to work together uh, to solve this problem. 
And the problem with their solution was one person at a time could have access to it. So they saw the ServiceNow platform as something anybody with an internet connection, uh, you know, your trusted partners could log in and share progress towards this uh, compliance. So App Factory leverages the ServiceNow platform. Where does App Factory leave off and ServiceNow pick up? Can sure. So consider App Factory really our efforts to build and productize applications on top of ServiceNow. So we're leveraging ServiceNow as the workflow engine. Uh, we may include other technologies, but it is the backbone of the applications we're building. Really what we're providing is process design, architectural guidance, documentation, support, sales, marketing. So we're going to leverage basically all of what Fruition does to take these applications to market. Now you've put about, well, more than 20 applications into Share, right? Correct. Um, and, and so talk about how you utilize Share and how you monetize or don't monetize the applications. Sure, sure. So Share is really designed by ServiceNow to be kind of a peer-to-peer, -peer, um, you know, sharing code, sharing certain uh, maybe solutions you've built, but uh, ideally smaller ones. This is really a complete application that we're taking to market. Uh, but like I, like I said, it also includes support, maintenance, uh, upgrades, uh, implementation services, beyond just kind of sharing the code itself. Okay, so you, now you guys have been in the IT service management space for a while. Um, what, uh, you know, for, for, talk about ServiceNow as a component of your business. So help us understand fruition a little bit better. How does the business break down? Is it predominantly ServiceNow? Is it transitioning to ServiceNow? It, it has been, yeah, so if we've been in business for 10 years, and really the first five years we were a service management consulting company, and we would kind of be vendor agnostic, uh, we met ServiceNow five years ago and decided that you know, doing the system integration work uh, was as powerful as doing the process consultancy. So ServiceNow has always been the backbone, uh, well, I should say, uh, as, as we entered the system integrator space. Mm -hmm. It is our focused single platform uh, that we work on. So we really kind of took the bet that you know, when customers want ServiceNow expertise, they want people that have done it, managed it, maintained it for the last five years. So that was an interesting decision that you had to make five years ago, right? You said, okay, we're going all in before the, what was before the IPO, right? Oh yeah, uh, oh, so yeah. So it was a tiny little company. There were about 50 people at the time. Yeah, this was 2008. 2008, okay, so How many so people now, were you? Eight. Eight. You eight people. <laughs> so, when in 2008 was it? Was it it the, was uh, second quarter, 2008. Okay, a customer, so just actually. before the, Gartner the, came the, out with it. Yeah, well, okay, yep. but just before the financial crisis. Oh yeah, right. yeah that was actually <laughs> it was perfectly timed. Yeah. Right. So okay, so the you, you decide we're all in with ServiceNow. We're eight person company. They're you know tiny little ServiceNow. Nobody's ever heard of them. We're going all in. Then the market crashes. Right. Right. And then your business took off. Yeah. Well, it was mar <laughs> the market crash was the best thing for ServiceNow yeah. <laughs> because people wanted a cheaper. I shouldn't say cheaper, but a more affordable, lightweight solution. And because of that, it know, was a forcing function. It was a forcing function that moved a lot of people to service. Now, at the same time, being eight people, and we, we loved the tool so much, and the decision to go to being a system integrator was something we realized. We were being a process consultancy, but we always handed off development to somebody else. And so we saw the value in combining the development and the process consultancy. And then as we met ServiceNow, being a, a software company, they didn't you know, necessarily at the time want to have a big services capability. So it actually, yeah, it just worked out incredibly so, well. But, but that's a different skill set to make that transition, right? You know, it's interesting. Being a, a cloud-based uh, platform, you don't necessarily need the hardcore developer, product lifecycle management, integration people that you might need if you were a mobile development company, if you were developing mm -hmm. in C or other technologies, because this is really more about the information and the process and the service than it is about the hardcore development. So it was actually a natural extension it was, for you guys. Yes. Okay, and so the, the skill set that you needed was an understanding of process, understanding of business requirements, and some logic flow, obviously. Correct. Right? So you're not a programmer by background. Ah, I actually am. Oh, you are? Yes. Okay. All right, so that even helped more. It did, yes. Okay, so you had those skills. Now, okay, that's even better. So we could talk to somebody who's got you know computer science expertise. Yeah, right? it's been a while. Okay, <laughs> but still, but, but you, you came from that background, but, but you naturally, no, were you, were you ever a hardcore developer? Uh, I mean, that's how I came out of college. My first few years were actually doing development yeah. right, for work. Okay, yes. but Google wasn't hiring you, right? <laughs> okay, so, but you knew enough about development to say, sure. okay, I, I, can, I can migrate to this platform, and this is an easy way, or an easier way for, for my company to develop apps yes. that are going to support my business. Yes. Okay, so talk a little bit more about how the applications that you develop support 
your business. I'm, I'm interested in the sort of monetization model there. Ah, sure. So basically, you know, we don't, uh, although we do service the IT service management market, mm -hmm. we've kind of dropped the IT piece off. You know, we talk in terms of service management. We find that the process disciplines uh, that you can take from ITIL or IT service management, uh, they really are broadly applicable to looking at HR, case management, field services, uh, purchasing, legal. All of these other departments are essentially doing uh, IT service management processes. They just don't call them that, right? A call center will call their, uh, they won't call them incidents, they'll call them cases, right? Uh, if you're uh, in HR or something, it's just a naming convention. But we're all really doing uh, the same kinds of work. So with that kind of hat on, we found that you know, ServiceNow, because uh, at its backbone is a service management tool, it was easy to translate these other departments' processes onto the ServiceNow framework. We even you know, compared and contrasted building things on Salesforce compared to ServiceNow. And because it's a, more of a workflow engine uh, versus like a campaign management, contact management system, those processes were easier to put on top of ServiceNow. How do you compete with the big global whale system integrators, the guys that have you know, hundreds of thousands of employees, they're in every country, in every city, sure. deep domain expert uh, expertise by, by industry. What's your differentiator there? Uh, sure, we try to be very practical. Uh, you know, we have, first off, we have, being an early adopter of ServiceNow, uh, having now five years experience on the platform, uh, that depth of expertise, and being that that is our niche focus. I mean, so on the system integration side, it is the depth of focus and the innovation uh, of, uh, of what we built on top of ServiceNow. But at the same time, our approach to doing the, the consulting and process side is very pragmatic. We try to, we speak in terms of crawl, walk, and run, that as customers are trying to adopt, not just the technology, they're trying to change themselves as an organization, so we try to make incremental improvements because we realize there's a, a strong people side of this business, and I think that really resonates uh, with our customers. We're not trying to pull up a busload of people for the next three years. We're trying to show incremental value every three to four months. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a ServiceNow Center of Excellence, is that right? Uh, we do, and actually. Talk more about that. Sure, well we actually have um, two main functions. One is our, we have a research and development function, which is kind of our internal COE. Uh, well, how we build, how we architect, how we recommend designing um, ServiceNow applications. And then the ability, uh, I mentioned the Columbia and the Barranquilla Development Center. Mm. So that's actually how we actually then go execute and manage um, ServiceNow for customers. Okay, so it's a it's so it's a resource for your 220, or it's a, a, a it is a, a, yes, and, and you sometimes fly customers in and they kick the tires, or is a is it really more an internal resource? It, it is uh, predominantly internal, but you, we then uh, apply those resources to kind of the harder, more challenging, and innovative solutions we're trying to build. So it's a way for you guys to repeat and oh, yeah. and, and apply best practice to, and throughout your organization and make yourselves more productive and ultimately pass on the the value to clients. Exactly, if we were only doing one project at a time and not learning anything from that project, then we really don't gain much value. We have to you know, do a project, learn something, catalog it, understand how we could use it, maybe it's applicable to other industries. So that's kind of what that function performs for us, is learning from our, uh, our own work. Stuff you'd like to see from ServiceNow as a partner, what's on their to-do list? You know, you're, you're talking to ServiceNow <laughs> here. What's, uh, what do you want to see them do that would help, help your business? Uh, probably the biggest things that they've been doing um, they're already in motion. So things like Share, things like the uh, the app community, basically starting to showcase what their partners have built. And I don't mean the uh, the independent software vendor partners, their services partners, and we know a lot of them from being in the ecosystem for years. Uh, they've actually built, like we have, this ICD-9 to ICD-10 compliance application, HR case management. Uh, we've done things for envi environmental health and safety, but we've had to showcase those, you know, kind of ourselves. I think ServiceNow is you know, making strong moves into showcasing what people have actually built on their platform, not just their customers, but their services partners. But does the line start to break down between the services partners and the ISV partners as you start to build more applications? Probably the closest, um, because we only build on top of ServiceNow, that's a little bit different. So we're basically building solution using ServiceNow as the workflow engine, rather having our own separate technology that just integrates uh, with ServiceNow. But I would imagine there's some pure play ISV partners building their app on ServiceNow down on the floor? Good question. Maybe, I mean, if there's, um, it is possible. Possible, but you're not putting, but there's none that you're actively uh, Not a ton, though. You I mean, you walk around the exhibit hall, it's a lot of service providers yeah. that, are, that are, you know, playing ISV, because right. yeah. it's easy to do, but hardcore ISVs are, you know, maybe building their own service management app. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. it's a nice way if you've got a nice it, complimentary widget, a lot yeah. of customers. It, 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 and Mark, you're cool sharing your innovations. Obviously, you're putting stuff in share with your competitors. 
Uh, you're right. We have to we have to understand you know what what we consider you know very very compelling and what we want to share and how much we share and how much we give away. Of yeah. course, you know we want to be relevant to the community. We want to show that we have domain expertise, but we also don't want to give away too much. So we're, we're always kind of finding that balancing act between you know showing that we know the product and we know the tool, but not educating our competitors. It's, it's kind right. of like the open source thing. You know how much engineering resource do you put towards your core versus the open source? How much do you put towards your commercial products versus that which you're going to share? Right, exactly. When you want to participate in, in both. Mm -hmm. Right, because we want to, we want to do, we do want to show our relevance. We kind of consider it a marketing uh, tool as well, mm -hmm. that, that we are relevant and we build innovative solutions, but you can't give it away. Right, right. Okay, Mark, we got to go. Well, so we'll have to leave it there. Thanks okay. very much for coming back Thank on theCUBE. Yeah. Congratulations with the progress that you've made with uh, fruition and, uh, and good luck, we'll be watching. Okay, thank All you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back after this word, this is theCUBE.